This series is nothing more than a big disappointment. First, you come to the video thinking it's going to give you real creation science, but no. This guy is an evolutionist. Then you watch the video, and it's full of mistakes. If you were subscribed from the first season, you had to wait over six months between episodes 20 and 21, after he promised he'd only be gone for a month. And then he changed the opening intro from the brilliant Moses Noah Garden of Eden sequence to this pathetic thing. It must be so disappointing for him after all this work to be so undersubscribed, but in the end, he probably deserves to be such a failure. I had to investigate. Wait. Just for the heck of it. Okay, yes, I blew it on the intro. I had a great one, but it was too long. If you don't believe me, try binge-watching the first season and see how irritating it gets. I'm going on another hiatus, but by the next season, I'm going to find the happy medium between the first season intro and the second season intro. Speaking of hiatuses, yes, I know I promised that I'd only take a month hiatus at the end of last season, but I also didn't realize how mentally exhausted I was. This year I know better, so I can assure you that I will be back at the end of October for another 20 episodes. In the meantime, I'm not going to be completely silent. I have another project that I will be producing here. There is a resource I have wanted to find on YouTube which I have been unable to find, so I've decided I will be the one to make it happen. Over the next few years, I will be producing a project tracing the evolution of all religions. It will not be a sequential series like this one. It will be more like a celestial choose-your-own-adventure. It'll trace the origin of religion from the equivalence of superstition in animals all the way to the modern extant religions. It will not be solely focused on Western religions, but rather a detailed report on as many religions as I can cover. The idea will be to trace religions to their sources and explore the factors which led to their founding. As far as gaining new insights, I'd like to credit E.E. E. Ehrenberg for correcting me in episode 22, short period comets. I had asserted that comet tails are caused by water boiling and that the solar wind wasn't the cause. In fact, the solar wind does contribute to the tail, causing it to always flow away from the sun. A few hours after having uploaded episode 31, Civilization, I was surprised to find that it had been removed for inappropriate content. Of course, I challenged the removal, but I also wanted to make sure my subscribers had a chance to see it. I uploaded the video to my Google Drive account and linked it from a video bringing attention to its removal. In that video, I asked all viewers to get back to me with whatever they thought was offensive. Many of you even uploaded a mirror of the video. If you were one of those who mirrored the video or even commented on the video linking to it, you may have noticed that I subscribed to you. You can be sure that I am watching your content. In the end, the video was reinstated in less than a day. To the person who flagged it, you failed. I got double the amount of views between both videos. Episode 35, The Shrinking Sun, was a colossus of stupid. I made the most bonehead mistake ever in forgetting to update the title card. Instead of it reading Episode 35, The Shrinking Sun, it read Episode 34, Earth's Magnetic Field. I can't ever take that one back. In the video, I stated that it takes 100 years for a photon to travel from the sun's core to its surface. As Akira 625 corrected me, the actual amount of time is up to a million years. I also stated that the sun loses 43 million kilograms of mass per second. Totoritko was good enough to clarify that the figure is actually 4 million tons per second, and even at this rate, the total mass loss over 5 billion years would still be less than 1% of the sun's current mass. I am both blessed and cursed with viewers who know their science. If I make an error with regard to paleontology, you can be sure a paleontologist will correct me. The same can be said for physics, geology, biology, and any other science I address here. Thank you to all who correct me and are willing to direct me to your sources. I can't say I enjoy the pressure I feel to make sure I get it all right, but I appreciate the intellectually respectful way in which you correct me. Last year, I came to the conclusion that my channel was too small to make any difference, so I didn't do any shoutouts. This year, I still feel the channel is too small, but I really want to lend some help to some great up-and-coming YouTubers. I owe it to them, and I owe it to those who have helped me. 
If you're one of my subscribers, the chances are that whether you accept evolution or believe in creationism, you have a passion for science. In that case, you owe it to yourself to visit Justin Gabriel's channel. As of this upload, he has less than 500 subscribers. This is in no way indicative of the caliber of his work. Ice, which is a solid, and solids have a definite shape and volume. And if I boil it, it becomes water vapor, which is a gas which has no definite shape or volume. And if you are a real science geek in elementary school, you would know about plasma, which is a gas that is superheated to the point where it is ionized, meaning it This next shout out is for a channel that has supported me for quite a while. He has less than 100 subscribers as of this upload, but he has a lot of content. Ain't Quite Right is the first person to downplay his own talents but he does have a lot of interesting commentary. He's worth checking out. There's found another miracle, though, inside the burned out car, a Bible on the front seat that wasn't burned at all. So that is God. So if you don't believe, I don't know what to say. I certainly can't do a complete investigation as to how this occurred. I'm not in a position to interview people like the policeman who supposedly, or fireman, who supposedly took this Bible out of the SUV after it was fully engulfed in flames, which is the claim that's being made here. Of course, the media is not going to do that sort of thing either. They are going to keep repeating the story. If you like my style of presentation, or have a massive interest in paleontology, give the living past to visit. Every time I see one of his videos, I can't help but be caught up in his passion for his topics. I only wish I could portray that as well as he does. It'd be the most amazing thing ever assembled. In this old black and white snapshot were two fearsome dinosaurs, posed with their jaws stretched wide, their long tails wriggling, and their feet firmly planted in the ground. And remember, these weren't just any dinosaurs. These were skeletons of the greatest dinosaur of all, Tyrannosaurus rex. A pair of them, depicted moments before battling each other over the carcass of the dismembered hadrosaur at their feet. And I just One of my favorite channels on YouTube is Poisoning the Well. Anytime I see they've published a new video, I click on it immediately. They do an absolutely hilarious and thorough job of skewering pseudoscientific lunacy. But why would they lie? In exchange for millions of dollars. Of course, but what else? Uh, pat on the back by the liberally biased media. Ugh, those jerks. Any other reason? Um, big high five from all the feminists out there who want to kill babies and scream at their bodies, their whatever the heck they scream. I, f I think we're getting off track here a bit. What? My last shout out goes to a YouTuber who is quickly making waves, especially among the skeptic community. Her name is Christy Winters MD, and she has supported this series practically from the beginning. As of this upload, she has just under 1,700 subscribers, but she has already drawn the ire of some major channels. But yeah, just show us your sources so that we can think for ourselves. I don't think that that's a much to ask. To just put in the comment section, yeah. where is your evidence? His, his, his use of fallacies is becoming genuinely... Uh, Worrying the why because as I said, her channel is making waves fast, but I have to admit I'm a little jealous. She's got so many detractors attacking her channel, and I don't seem to have even one. I've looked all over YouTube and the only videos I can see attacking me are my own. What's up with that? So now I'll be announcing that in addition to my upcoming Evolution of Religion series, I will also be posting occasional opinion pieces. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I just want to draw attention to myself by delivering opinions on things like feminism, politics, or economics. I also want to be able to address some subjects suggested by viewers in my comment sections that don't really deal with creationism. I'm going to take those suggestions and address them when the mood strikes me. One comment I do see quite regularly is that I'm undersubscribed. Keep in mind that the style of this video can be Misleading. If you're a creationist, the chances are that you watched one of my videos and then realized that you misunderstood the title, felt it was misleading and you never watched again, or even thought you'd pay attention in some masochistic desire to find that one argument for which you think you have the ultimate defense. On the other hand, if you accept the scientific consensus on evolution, cosmology, etc., you probably had an even more difficult conundrum. You probably started to watch an episode and became thoroughly disgusted. Some of you, for whatever reason, stuck it out and realized that this series was actually preoccupied with science. Maybe you even put together that the title of this series is truly an accurate description of how creationism led to a greater understanding of science for me. So this is where I feel I have to explain that it's okay for me to be, as many of you describe, 
undersubscribed. I knew ahead of time that a series of videos debunking creationist claims would be of no interest to creationists. I also knew that framing it as placating to creationism, I was also repelling those who accept the scientific consensus. What success I have is due to you, my subscribers. I will certainly take credit for the content of this series, but it has been you that have spread the word. I don't want to sound like I'm pandering, but this is the truth. I don't promote this series on social media. I don't have a Twitter account. I do have a personal Facebook account, but I don't promote this series there. I don't monetize this series, so you should see no commercials before or during any episodes. And I don't shill for sponsors, nor do I ask for donations to a Patreon account. The point is, I do this for the love of educating, not for money. I don't think less of anyone who does make money off their videos. I've just learned over the course of my life that the easiest way to come to hate doing what you love is to do it for money. So nobody, not even YouTube, is making money off of these videos. So please understand, I am not placating your egos when I say that you, the audience, are all part of how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.